Welcome everyone. I'd like to call tonight's regular council meeting to order. Recommendation that the agenda for the regular council meeting of October 9th, 2018 be adopted as presented with the additional of late agenda item 6C, report from the city planner regarding development permit application on for a construction camp for Pemina Prince Rupert Terminal on Watson Island. Moved by Councillor Renhawa, second by Councillor Moreau. All those in favour? Any opposed? Motion is carried. Item 3A, recommendation that the minutes of the regular council meeting of September 17th, 2018 be adopted. Moved by Councillor Cunningham, seconded by Councillor Nish. All those in favour? Opposed? Motion is carried. For those that watch council meeting, need notice that the minutes portion are the funniest portions for us sometimes. Okay, moving on to uh, item 6A, report from the uh, Manager of Transportation and Economic Development regarding the Digby Island Ferry 2019 refit award. Welcome, Mr. Vendatelli. Uh, good evening, Mayor Council. Um, yeah, so that uh, that time of uh, of the ferry cycle, we got uh, the uh, ferry captains and crew and our engineering team uh, got together and put a request for quotes on BC bid, in which we received three uh, quotes. Um, and uh, at this point, we would like to, the staff would like to recommend to award the 2019 Digby Island refit to Point Hope Maritime, which is the, the lowest quote <coughs> received. That is our recommendation. Questions from Council? Okay, moved by Councillor Nish, seconded by Councillor Cunningham. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Any opposed? Motion's carried. Great, Thanks thank you. Thank you very much. Report from our Chief Financial Officer regarding the August 2018 Financial Variance Report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, for August, as of August, most operating utility revenues and expenses are on track for this time of year and are within budget of note. This report is the additional unbudgeted building permits uh, revenue received from Pemina Pipelines and Metlakatla Development Corporation. This increased revenue in the operating fund by $635,000. As such, development services revenue are higher this year than last year. Capital projects are ongoing. Costs will continue to come in and will be reported on monthly. This report has been provided for monthly information purposes. Thank you. Any questions from Council? Recommendation that Council receives this report for information purposes. Moved by Councillor Cunningham, second by Councillor Nish. Any further discussion? All those in favour? Any opposed? Motion is carried. Okay, next we have a report from our City Planner regarding uh, development permit for Pemina Construction Camp on Watson Island. <coughs> Welcome back. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we are in receipt of a application for development permit from Horizon North, which will be, hmm, computer is slow. So. <coughs> Start the tour. Your room. I'm not going to do. I'm not going to attach. I think you can see it on the screen. The camp will be located uh, just uh, off the Skeena Drive. This is the approximate location. An aerial photograph. Uh, the site has changed quite a bit. This is a, an older, earlier aerial photograph supplied with the application. The camp itself. This is the layout. You also have it in your attachments. Um, it will be totally self-contained. It will include water, sewer, and its own power. Uh, internal referral um, produce some comments, which will be handled at the building permit stage and at the condition of fin final occupancy. And external referrals um, to Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure and Ministry of Environment have not been received in time for this report. However, the staff was in contact with both ministries and confirms that positive response is imminent and therefore the subject to in my recommendation. The location of proposed project is substantially removed from the city built area and will have no effect on form and shape. Costs are covered by the application fee and the proposed project complies in conclusion with the industrial development permit area design guidelines. And that concludes my report. Great, thank you. 
Uh, so the recommendation that council issue a development permit number 1812, subject to receiving positive referrals from the Ministry of Highways and Infrastructure and the Ministry of Environment. Moved by Councillor Cunningham, second by Councillor Niche. Discussion? Councillor Cunningham. Uh, first question, 75 parking places, is that going to be adequate for a 150 bed unit? <coughs> Yes, we have gone through this once before, and uh, this time I have uh, evaluated this campsite, this camp uh, development project as a boarding house. In other words, one parking place for, for two, for every two sleeping units. Um, in, con in conversations with the um, applicant, many of these individuals will be flying in and by being bussed in as compared to the number of people who will be coming and driving from the region. So it, it, in my opinion, will be adequate. Any other questions here? Uh, do they need like traffic study too, like or no, at this stage or later on? Uh, no, uh, they do require a uh, access permit. Applicant is aware of the requirement for the access permit, and during that during that process, they'll be evaluating traffic um, volumes. Other questions from Council? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Motion's carried. <coughs> and uh, another topic from our Mr. Planner tonight, what everyone has uh, been waiting for, our <coughs> the rezoning amendment bylaw number 3430. Uh, Bylaw to amend the city of uh, Prince Rupert zoning bylaw to per permit cannabis retail stores. So the recommendations uh, for this report is that council gives the first reading uh, to the city of Prince Rupert zoning amending bylaw, and that council directs the staff to schedule information meeting for November 13th of this year, from 5:30 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Coast Mountain College. Uh, the reason for this report, of course, is that the uh, federal government is imminently going to decriminalize or legalize um, non-medical recreational cannabis use. Each province was given the opportunity to, to manage the sales of the, um, of the um, cannabis. In BC, cannabis will be solely controlled by the Liquor and Cannabis Regulation Branch, LCRB, which will be responsible for licensing and monitoring retail sales. A component of the application process will be a referral to the local government for consideration. LCRB will not issue a license without a positive recommendation from the local government. For a very quick background, there are the changes in legislation affect municipalities in seven broad ways. Uh, zoning, regulatory bylaws, inspections, municipal enforcement, finance and revenue, engagement in education, and economic development. This report is concentrating on the land use requirement and specifically um, on retail sales. Uh, there are couple of other items that can, that can be brought into the land use regulations in the future, future which is processing and cultivation, which in my estimation, um, we are substantially far away from the markets that such will be required. However, if it is, they can be considered as a separate item altogether. Uh, <coughs> As for analysis, in considering the particular local circumstances of Prince Rupert, below is a summary of the proposed amendments in the amending bylaw. Number 3430218, which is included in, at in attachment number one. And for the purposes of this meeting, I will go over the broad headings which I included in my report um, <coughs> in how this would look in our zoning bylaw itself. So we have to, first of all, amend the definitions, and we will include two new de definitions, cannabis and can cannabis retail sales. Cannabis is defined exactly as cannabis, in, as in Cannabis Act, that's a Canadian legislation, and cannab cannabis retail sales will be defined exactly the same as in a Cannabis Control Licensing Act, and therefore we have consistency. Then we will include a new section in um, general provisions which will, <coughs> number one, define 
the look where <coughs> uh, where the sales can be um, um, uh, where retail sales can be located, and that will be done by a schedule which will be attached to the zoning bylaw. And um, I'm sure that you can see it, if not clearly, at least adequately, the magenta color on this aerial photograph that delineates the part of downtown and Cow Bay where retail sales will be permitted. We will also <coughs> restrict uh, um, clustering by separating ca uh, cannabis retail stores by 75 meters, which is approximately the uh, length of our uh, average city block. And finally, in cases where multiple entrances <coughs> are buildings that, that have multiple entrances, measurement will be from the closest entrance of the building to the proposed location. <coughs> And the last part of the amendment will be to amend in exactly the same way zones C1, C2, C3, C5, and C6 by including cannabis retail stores as a permitted use and directing the reader to s section 3.16.0, which we just reviewed, uh, for details with respect to location. You will note that we are missing zone Six four, that is our neighborhood commercial. So it will be not permitted in any uh, neighborhood uh, commercial uh, areas, and all of these zones are in the area that's prescribed with this with this uh, perimeter. Uh, <coughs> the cost and budget. This application is by council initiative. The cost will include organizing and ad advertising for information meeting, public hearing, not public hearing notification in local newspapers, as well as staff time. And the first reading and conclusion of first reading as recommended will move the proposed amending bylaw into a review process. And an information meeting will allow staff to present amending bylaw number 3430-2018 as well as the proposed changes to the business trade license bylaw and council policy for considering cannabis retail license to the community. And that concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Before we d uh, begin discussion, I just want to highlight a couple key points. So what's important to note is that today is just the beginning of a process uh, and a lot of the proposed recommendations are subject to change upon public feedback and public review. And so the opportunity will be the beginning here would be November 13th, 2018 at 5.30 to 7 at the college to hear some information and then there would be a second reading after that uh, and then a third and final reading plus the public hearing. So there's a process to go through here so nothing that's being proposed is absolutely set in stone but it's the proposed regulations that were drafted and have put presented now to the community. Uh, shortly within this week there'll be a video as well as an FAQ posted to the City of Prince Rupert's Facebook page, uh, which people can share that will uh, clearly articulate the process, how this all works. People are going to be able to access that, be able to share with their friends and family so they can get that information. Uh, one thing I recommend is that perhaps we launch an online as well as an offline survey, one at the information session and one online so that we can get other community feedback so it's not just at the information session so that we actually have an people have an ability to comment with us. That would be one suggestion I make around the public engagement. And so I just want people to know that this is now a process uh, and not necessarily the end result. Uh, and I just wanted folks to realize that uh, before we move forward with this because uh, as everyone's aware this is not just new to Prince Rupert this is new to all of Canada and this is something that all municipalities are having to uh, tackle and uh, we want to do it in a way that's safe and responsible and makes sense for the community uh, but we really need the community's feedback to really make sure that this thing is designed in a way that actually gets uh, as much consensus as possible for the community so that being said I'll hand it over to council for any questions um, that they may have Council Morrow. I have a question. Oh. Go ahead. Um, it, uh, what I was wondering was, should we also, uh, because this is, we're looking at retail, should we also be looking at, um, uh, I guess, a question of whether we're going to have, um, uh, I'm, I can't, I don't know what you quite call it, but places where people can sit down and uh, smoke uh, cannabis in a, in a, in a, in a setting like you drink beer. <laughs> uh, 
um, uh, shop or whatever, but I'm not quite sure what it's called. Yeah, uh, we don't know what it's called really because at, at this time uh, the legislation and, and the process in British Columbia for sure, and I'm sure that it's uh, sort of similar across the um, across other provinces. Uh, this this will at, at this point in time, what is legal is to sell. You cannot smoke it on site. That was in the definitions. And the only place that you can consume uh, cannabis is on your private premises. Uh, also, our um, uh, our um, um, uh, smoking in a public places bylaw will also be amended to include a similar prohibition as for the uh, f uh, as for the uh, as for the tobacco. Now that being said, uh, that's something that's coming down the road, uh, Council Torkelson. That's something that will be in effect probably in the next year or two, together with consumables. Uh, to um, um, the uh, edible, e edibles produced from from cannabis. So at this point in time, those uh, uh, smoking lounges are illegal. <coughs> So we're not Amsterdam yet, I guess, eh? 25 years from now, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Council Murrow? I just have a question around the, uh, the uh, kind of a procedural gray area here that I, I'm not sure if we have clarity with the province yet um, around what a positive recommendation from local government means. Does it, in our case, does that mean us issuing a business license? <clears throat> so positive, positive, uh, positive recommendation is a resolution. We were, you know, as 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 Mayor Brain just mentioned, you know, this is new across British Columbia and new across Canada, and even today. Hello. Should I do something? Uh, Rory will. Is one the, moment. Is the mayor press answer? She must have fallen. Rory speaking. I'm so excited that I. <laughs> 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 um, so I'm, I, I lost train of my thoughts. Yeah, it was just my lost train of. Oh yeah, is it a business license or a resolution? Yeah, so you know, today we were discussing, you know, what is the what is the the, the process, the exact process. We we still need some clarification. So just to kind of paint a bigger picture, uh, along what Mayor Brain had just said, today we are dealing strictly with the zoning bylaw, which is permitted uses and regulations to with respect to sales where they can be sell, sold. The point that you're making is in a policy which is a separate item altogether, and or business license by which is a separate item together. Both of those are being... Just a moment, please. Yeah. Hello. Joy again. I think they're just connecting me at the switchboard, so I just asked them to continue to connect me. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you haven't really. We we are now talking about um, about um, um, again. I lost train of my thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we were talking about <laughs> the just zoning bylaw. The, we are just talking about the zoning bylaw, and those items are still in the works, and we will have those ironed out by the time of the public information meeting. The ergonomics of when the council issues a resolution to the policy to say that yes we agree to issue a license to the point of issuing a license itself. We just need to clarify that. Perfect. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Uh, I, I didn't know they were going to shut me off. Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay, other questions from Council? I think uh, Zen will answer it, but uh, we won't be issuing a business license until all conditions are met then, is what you're saying. Exactly. That includes security, blah, 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 blah. That's exactly what we are clarifying right now. What, uh, you know, council has asked for certain security items to be, to be included uh, as part and parcel of their ap final approval, which we cannot put in a policy. It would have to go in a bylaw itself. But it has to go in a both. So in a policy is a promise. For example, I will put cameras with so many megapixels or so many hours of saved time. Um, those items are not. We ha we don't have clarification between us and uh, and the and this uh, uh, cannabis 
a liquor cannabis co uh, control branch. Um, so we'll, we're going to clarify that to make sure that, uh, that we issue it. So our business license will have to answer all of your questions. And if some of your questions end up being above the, the threshold of what the licensing branch is asking for, then they will have to provide that as well before you agree to, to issue the, the, the business license. And that'll be available at the public hearing, so people that are interested in coming forth with a business license and that can, after the public hearing and any amendments to this, can then step forward? We will have to clarify that at the time of the public information meeting, not only for those who may be interested in starting a business, but for the community to understand how the process will work, because you, will, you know, community will have a chance to be involved in every store itself. And and this is going back to the video that's going to be released tomorrow by the City of Prince Rupert with the procedures and everything. Perfect. Thank you. Other comments from Council? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, like you said, this is first step, then depend on the public's feedback, second step, then right. So, to get more feedback, you said, like, uh, we can get surveys over there and online too, right? So, can we get to get more people's feedback, like, keep some at library or civic center? Is it possible to? Yeah, that's kind of what I would recommend is that maybe we could develop a survey that touches on our, what we're recommending and have them offline and online, if it's possible anyways, and then ha maybe we could have them up here at City Hall or at library or whatever. I think we need to make sure that this is very accessible because it's new and it's different and people are going to have a lot of questions and, you know, we don't want to have a point where we get to a public hearing and not all the information, not ability for people to have all that input be heard. And I think it's just important, particularly with this process, that we touch as many ways to have feedback from the public on this one. And I think online and offline surveys at the information session would be good as well. And then we can amalgamate that data and, and try to really make the best decision possible uh, because we will make changes based on what the community says. And that's very important in this case. I just want to put that out there again that uh, without the feedback, uh, Council will go with wh where we're going with things with this recommendation. So we need that feedback in order to make appropriate changes that the community in a whole wants to see. Are there c comments from Council? Okay, so seeing as this is the first step, a uh, recommendation that Council gives first reading to the City of Prince Rupert Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 3430-2018, and that Council directs staff to schedule an information meeting for November 13th, 2018, from 5.30 to 7 p.m. at the Coast Mountain College. Moved by Councillor Nish, second by Councillor Cunningham. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Any opposed? Motion's carried. Thank you very much for your, all your hard work on this uh, process as well. I know how much uh, time and effort this has been for the planning department, so thank you very much. Okay, moving on to reports, questions, and inquiries from members of council. Councilor Cunningham. Okay, I got a couple of things here. Uh, the first one is uh, I'd like to thank uh, Janice uh, or Janet Dantes. She uh, took it uh, on her own initiative to uh, put in some money and then collect some more money and clean up a piece of property that was the entrance to the golf course. It was kind of an eyesore to anyone coming to our golf course and that. And I'd just like to recognize the fact that here's a member of the community stepping up and uh, taking, taking it into her own hands to, to help clean up along with uh, Paws to Pin Fruper and some of the other groups that go out. And uh, I, I, thought, I thought she should be recognized for the effort she put into it. Secondly, uh, today I was told that uh, Mackenzie or Ashley Furniture, whatever they call themselves, is celebrating their 95th business or years in business, which is kind of a milestone for any company in a small town. And thirdly, now that we've got Rustbrook Trail, we're developing some problems at one end, the industrial end where McLean Shipyard is with people parking in the wrong place and things like that. And what I'd like to see, and I thought we'd sort of settle this a couple years ago, that in the winter months, and we can determine that October 31st, whenever, to, to April or sometime, when all the fishing comes up again, that we give people free parking in Rustbrook 
so that they can go down there, enjoy that trail, and get some exercise in the winter. It's, we should be encouraging people to use it and then set a pattern so that when we, can, we have time to put signage up at the other end, directing people where to park and things like this, because it's getting to be a bit of a problem down at the other end, because it is an industrial site, and people are coming out of the trail and wandering around an industrial site, and it's just a matter of time. And also, I know staff's working on something to do with uh, Rustbrook in the summer because uh, with the trucks and trailers sticking out there, people are now stepping out into the road, into traffic, and boats and trailers are backing up and that. And I just like to see people get to use that trail in the winter and not have to worry about a parking ticket when they get back. Thank you, Councillor Cunningham. That's great suggestions. Reports from councils? Councilor Thorkelson? Uh, no, I just, um, uh, I guess this is my uh, second last meeting and I just wanted to say that it's been an honor to be on council and, um, and uh, I hope you uh, um, continue on the same pathway and, and just remember that uh, council isn't all about business, it's about people too and I think we've done very well so far and I'm sure I have all the confidence that this council um, and the future council will continue to remember that uh, uh, the city is for people as well as for business. Thank you, Councillor uh, Thorkelson, and uh, we'll have many more words to say uh, about your council term on the 22nd as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> okay, well, uh, seeing no other reports, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Cunningham, second by Councillor Nish. All those in favor? Means adjourn. Have a great evening.